Hi guys, welcome back. This is Micromus at MH Tutorials, and today I want to address a question that I got from a subscriber regarding uh, whether you can uh, model an object in Maya that's containing a fluid. Now, that is certainly not my area of expertise, but I'm willing to give it a go, and let's see how it works out. Okay. So first of all, we're going to create a ground plane for our object to sit on. So we're going to go to our polygons menu, click on the uh, the plane here, and we're going to drag that out in the grid like that. We're going to hit 5 for shaded mode. We're going to go over here, right click on that, go to edge, click on that edge, go to edit mesh, hit extrude, hit W, pull that up and pull that out like that, maybe a bit up more. We're going to select that one. I'm going to go to Edit Mesh and hit Bevel. And in the Attribute Editor, we're going to go to the Poly Bevel tab. We're going to de decrease the offset a little bit, pull up the segments, so it's nice and round, something like that. Okay. Now we just need to get rid of these two faces here. So right click on that. Go to face, select that one, shift select that one, and hit delete. Okay, so we've got that. Now, next, we're going to apply some material to this. So we're going to drag select the entire thing, right click, assign new material. I'm going to go with a Fong E, change the color to white, and we're all set. Okay. Okay, next. Now we're going to create some sort of container. So I'm simply going to create a polygon cube. We're going to drag that out on the grid. Pull that up. I'm going to right click on the top of it. Go to face mode. Select the top face. Going to go to edit mesh and extrude. Hit R to scale that in something like that. Go to Edit Mesh and Extrude again. And hit W to pull it down. And I'm just going to quickly change my view here so I can see where I'm at. Okay. Something like that. So you get this box shape kind of thing. Okay. Back to our perspective view. So that's what we got so far. Okay. Now, we need to create some sort of fluid to go into this container. So, what we're going to do is we're going to create another cube. We're going to drag that out in the grid. Pull that up. Hit W to move it in. And now from our top and side view, we're going to model this in shape. Okay? I'll just hit 5 for shaded mode. Actually, that doesn't help. I'll go back to 4 wireframe mode. And we're going to hit R to scale that a little bit. A bit more. Hit W to move it in. Like that. Hit R again. Scale it something like that. W. You know, you get the idea. Just uh, make it fit. That looks about right. Okay. Check it from our side view here. I'm going to hit W and we're going to pull that up. Okay. So now it looks like we got a box with a fluid level inside. Okay. Now we need to apply some material to these objects, to that object and that object. Now the problem with Maya 2014 is that in the past you could uh, select a dielectric material Something went wrong, I guess, with the new uh, 2014. Uh, if you have 2014 and you updated with uh, Service Pack 1, you shouldn't have this problem. But anyway, normally you can right-click on this object, go to Assign New Material, and select Dielectric Material. Now, that doesn't show up anymore. It's uh, located in Legacy Materials in our Hypershade. So what we're going to do is we're going to click that out, Go to Window, Rendering Editors, go to Hypershade. 
and in our hypershade we're going to go down to legacy materials like so in this list we got our dielectric material right there what we're going to do is we're going to middle mouse click this material and we're going to drag it over to our object and we're going to drag it over to our other object okay now you would think that okay it turned green so now the materials are applied but they are not so what we're going to do is we're going to select the outer casing here go to our uh, dielectric material go into the surface material uh, box here hit the checker box and we're going to select that material again so we're going to go down to legacy materials select dielectric material now it turned red so now it's applied okay we're going to do the same for the fluid inside select that we're going to okay we're already in the tab we're going to select the surface material we're going to go down to legacy materials and select that material now i'm not that clever that i figured this out by myself so i want to give a big thank you to david hurl uh, he has a YouTube tutorial on this uh, subject that was very helpful so thank you David all right so and again if you got the uh, the service pack one installed uh, in your my 2014 you shouldn't have this problem okay so now we've got these materials selected what we're going to do next is we're going to go to our render settings and hang on we're going to go to our render settings there we go and I'm going to select Mental Ray because we've got our Mental Ray material. I'm going to go to Indirect Lighting. I'm going to select Final Gathering. I want the accuracy level up to 567, like that. And I want to create image-based image -based lighting, like that. Okay, just going to minimize this. In my Attribute Editor tab, I'm going to set the uh, image based lighting file. So I'm going to click on that. And I got a bunch of HDRI files here that I can choose from. If you don't have any of those, just uh, Google for free HDRI uh, files. Or you can go to www.pixels-forum.com um, and you can find some stuff there as well. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, let's see, I'll go with this file here and you can just choose any one you like. Okay. So we've got that set up. Now we need to play with some uh, settings here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my material and uh, there we go. That's it. And I need to play with some settings here. Let's see where they are. Okay, so the index of refraction is 1.5 on the outer box, which is okay, right? And the inside, uh, so the out, the index refraction is 1.5. The outside index, I'm going to change that to 1.3, like that. And I'm going to do the same for the uh, the box inside. So 1.5 and 1.3, okay. Just going to increase the size of my ground plane here a little bit, like that. I'm going to move my object a little bit towards this area here. And now we're gonna give this a go and see what it looks like, okay. So um, back to my render settings. I got this all set up, okay. I'm going to go to my quality tab, I'm going to increase quality to about 1.25. And if you guys have a previous version of Maya prior to 2014, you can select something like production quality. I'm going to go to my common tab and I'm going to increase the size to HD 1080, minimize that. And we're going to give the render a go. So I'm going to position it something like that. And here we go. Now during the render, I'll pause the video because that's probably going to take some time and I'll be back with you guys as soon as it's done. Okay, here we go. All right, guys, and I'm back. 
Well, this is the end result of the render. Um, as you can see, it contains quite a lot of uh, brown color here. That's created by the IBL file that I use for my surroundings. Obviously, if you use a different uh, image that contains more blue, then your, uh, your fluid will look more blue, etc. So it's pretty much a depiction of what would happen in real life. And uh, that's uh, one way to do this. Um, you know, if you want to have active fluids like pouring water, something like that, that would be a total different ball game. But for now, this is uh, you know what I came up with. Uh, I hope it was helpful. If you got any questions, uh, let me know. Just uh, leave them in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching, and see you guys next time.